Welcome to the Databricks Skill Builder series. We're glad you're here. Welcome to this short video where we'll see how tag and attribute based access control policies can help you achieve your fine grained governance requirements in Databricks. Tags have been used successfully by many customers already to aid with the setup of data discovery and to handle cost attribution within their data platforms. Today we're going to see how tag policies applied on top of tags can give you the control you need over the tag name and values so that you can use them for governance. Let's take a look at how tags have been used in our demo environment here. On the production catalog, for example, we might have tags that indicate where users can go to get support for data in that, in that environment. Within the catalog, down at the table level, tags can be used for a number of purposes. Here we see tags at the table level as well as tags at the column level being used. And to apply tags to data assets, you just need to have the apply tag privilege. In this case, it's been granted to the HR developer team for this recruiting table. Now we see that this table is full of PII data. Email, address, and name are all good candidates for PII. And we see that the users have already added some tags here. But one of the problems with tagging in general for governance is that you don't have control over the name or the value of the tag. Here we see some of the columns were tagged PII yes and one was tagged PII true. Um, and in fact, in this case, it's actually helpful to have the PII tag indicate the type of data rather than a true or a false because we're going to want to be able to apply different behaviors to data depending on the type. Whether it's an email, we might want to mask the first part of the email. And if it's the name, we may want to mask the entire name, for example. And to do that, we need a tag policy that governs what the values are and who can apply those tags to various different data assets. We'll see govern tags have a different color and also a lock symbol next to them. You can also see even a third type of tag here, which is a system assigned tag. These are tags defined by Databricks that can be used for things like automatic PII detection and other things coming down the road on the roadmap. So we've talked about tags, different kinds of tags, the privilege that you need to apply tags. Let's go take a look now at how we set up tag policies so that we can use tags in order to do our governance requirements. For this, we're going to go up to the top of the catalog level, and we're going to create a new tag policy. We'll click on tag policies, and we'll create a tag policy for that PII tag that's already out there in use. And we'll just say rather than it can be yes or no, we want the tag policy uh, to indicate what the values are. They could be email, they could be phone, they could be name, and they could be SSN for starters. Now to create a tag policy, you need to have an account level permission. So if we go up here to the top level tag policies, we see we've got the permissions in this case assigned so that the data platform team is able to create them. And these can be uh, delegated to the governance team that's allowed to manage tag policies. You can even set up the permissions at the individual tag policy level. So one group can manage and apply the cost center tag while a different group can manage the values and apply the data domain tag, for example. So in our case, we've created a tag policy now for PII data, and its values are going to be these over here. As we come back to our catalog view, if I refresh this page now, we'll see that Unity Catalog is flagging us that these values are invalid now. 
And so we can just simply come in here and fix them. We'll make this one. Uh, now we'll change it to email. And we could do the other ones here as well, but I think for now I'm just going to remove them. Now, how do we make this tag, this govern tag, control the behavior of who can see the actual data here in the email column? And for that, what we need is an attribute-based access control policy. That's going to pull this tag value along with the rules as to who can see the data or not see the data and associate it with a, in our case here, a masking function, which we don't have yet. So let's go create a masking function that will hide the first part of the email address. For that, we'll come over here to the SQL editor. And just to save me time from having to look up the syntax for that, I'm just going to ask Databricks Assistant to create that for me. Create me a masking function that replaces the left part of an email with asterisks. And it's really pretty simple syntax, but it's just nice to use Databricks Assistant to get things done more quickly. You can also use this to create sample PII data, for example, to build your own demo. Okay, so now we've got our masking function. And if we come back over here and refresh the tree, we'll see that we did create it within the HR schema. So there's our table and our masking function. And there's our tag on the email column. And now we just need to create the ABAC policy to pull it all together. And for this, we'll go again back up to the, um, we're going to go to the catalog level right at the production level in this case. Tag attribute-based access control policies can be at the table, at the schema, or at the catalog level. But through the power of inheritance, we can set it at the catalog level and have it apply to everything within that catalog. So on the prod catalog, we'll go to the policy tab. We see we already have one here for revenue sensitive data that's filtering out rows uh, based on the user's region. And so we'll make a new ABAC policy and we'll call this one mask PII. We're going to have it to apply to everyone in the organization. Now we could have exceptions for certain people, but for the moment, in my demo, I'm going to have it apply to everyone, so it will even apply to me as I'm doing the demo. This will be a column masking function that we want to apply. And we could have some compound rules here. For example, maybe it needs to be a certain tag on a column, as well as it has to also include or not include a tag at the table level. In our case, it'll just be the the tag on the column level that we're looking for. So we set our select our masking function now, which was in the HR schema. This is the one we created just a moment ago. And we want this to apply, this masking function to be applied whenever we encounter a tag that has this name and this value. And now we can go back to our catalog view and see the policy in effect. I'll come over to sample data and we can see the data is already filtered even in our UI for myself. So that's how we use tag policies to get control over our tags and then ABAC policies to pull together the data that is tagged along with a column masking or row filter function to achieve our governance requirements.